I was happy there. there. I didn't, I didn't feel, feel I want to leave, leave it again. again. I was feeling, I was feeling so, so content with myself. myself. The film Peaky Blinders here as well. Oi! No fighting. Good old Tommy Shelby has actually been knocking about here. Absolutely cracking the flags. It's beautiful. So we've got a little gem here today. I'm filming in Droylesden at a place called the Fairfield Moravian Settlement. Now, it was built in 1785 at the cost of £6,000 and in today's money it works out about half a million quid. So they got a pretty good deal really. So for anyone that don't know what the Moravians are, they're basically like a, a religious family. And what they do is they were they're a, they're a religious group that go around the world and they preach their religion onto other cultures and try and get people like spread the word about who they are and what they're doing. They're a very independent and close-knit community and they're settled here in Droylesden. So we're going to go and have a little look round and uh, see what happens, eh? It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? It's proper got that, like, you know, movie set type. It doesn't feel real. <laughs> now, it's to my understanding that the Moravians came over around 1740 and they came over from Germany but they originate from the Czech Republic and they had to get out of there because they were persecuted in their own country look how stunning it is and they ended up settling here now they bought the land and built all these what you see now is uh, is what they actually made all these houses were, were owned by the, the Moravian families and um, the focal point which is over here and I'll show you in a bit it's the church and they go to the church two or three times a day and they would um, they were they're very very religious so they would uh, worship God there two to three times a day possibly more and they came over so the they're basically like a tight-knit community and they refer to each other as brother and sister even like the Reverend he's uh, no exemption so it's to show a quality and they call each other like brother uh, the the reverend at the minute i think is called uh, reverend cooper but they would call him brother cooper and it's a way of showing that we're all equal and we're all one now this is the square where i am at the minute i mean look at the cobbles that are still down the old horse and cart would have um, clattered its way up and down this street back in the day and it's absolutely stunning so right here, this is Brethren Street, and I'll just take you over a bit closer to it. This is Brethren Street here. Now, there's the church there, and on the opposite side is Sister Street. So the church separated them, and all the single males would live in these. And the single females lived on Sister Street and separating them in the middle is the church and the rest of these houses that you can see would have been filled up with actual families sorry I just nearly got stung by a wasp <laughs> would have, um, they would have been filled up with families and like people with uh, kids and they were happy couples now they didn't really deal with the outside world and they were very much an independent community and they really looked after each other Someone was going through a rough time. They'd like bend over backwards to make sure that it was all right. And if there was like a loss of a loved one, or, you know, there was some sort of, something bad had happened, they would, they would try their absolute best and pull through as a community to help them. So another great thing that the Moravians did is that there was, there was always very respectful to their elderly because these were seen as the backbone of the community and they passed on tradition uh, generation after generation so it was very important to the Moravians that they looked after them. Another thing that they really pushed for was education it was um, vital to them so 
the the trip the the teach at the school and I'm not too sure to what age and to what level but I do know that it was something that we were really passionate about and it was very important to him. I told you before that they, they prided themselves on being a self-sufficient community on this actual settlement and when I say that I actually I mean it because they had their own butcher shop here, they had their own general store to get the light like, bits and bobs, they even had their own inn so you could stop over and I'm not too sure if they had if it sold alcohol but it was like a pub you know like an inn and they had a they had their own fire engine and they kept that on the grounds of the church and they actually used it a couple of times it was very rare but they did actually use it now the men would bake they were fantastic at baking and the women would weave and that was how they generated an income. So when the Industrial Revolution happened, they, the women would have to go out and work as opposed to working on the, working on the settlement. They had to go out and work on, in the spinning mills and the cotton mills of Manchester and locally. Now, it's been used for various things, this, uh, this, this actual place. It's been used for film and they've filmed a lot of stuff over the years here. And an absolute favorite of mine and I think it probably is for a lot of us. Oi. It's Peaky Blinders. I absolutely love it. No fighting. And it was filmed no. on here. So, fighting! You know, it's like, you can see why they, they've used it as well. I mean, it's like stepping back in time. So, what we're gonna do now is gonna head over to the church and we're gonna have a little look around that and see what's, uh, see what's going on. This is the church and the Moravians would come here two to three times a day to worship God. And it was the heartbeat and focal point of this community. And they've just had a service on here now, and you should have heard it. I, I'm, I'm gutted, I didn't, uh, gutted I didn't record, but I was just sort of gawping at it. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't uh, record it. Now, I told you before that the Moravians prided themselves on being this self-sufficient um, community that didn't want anything to do really with the outside world and the only time that they did is to generate an income now I can only presume it was to foot the bill for places like this and just to keep them ticking over but something drastic was about to happen the industrial, the industrial revolution, revolution hit Manchester, Manchester and it changed the way of life for the Moravians forever. forever times were changing and it was out with the old school water powered mills and in came a new source of technology, steam power. This projected Manchester and the output of products and produce in the textile and spinning industry. And it was proven too much of a force for the Moravians to actually compete with Manchester. And sadly, they just didn't stand a chance. So when the Manchester Industrial Revolution happened, the, the Moravians just couldn't compete and it dwarfed them. Now they've heavily relied on this income and um, you know they just couldn't compete with it and the mills of Manchester they were originally water powered but then they, they then changed when the uh, revolution happened they changed to the steam power and they could just generate more output you know produce and don't forget the Moravians were hand weaving everything so they didn't stand a chance with the, the you know the force of Manchester they just didn't stand a chance now you've got to think about that era when it happened it was like the 1800s the slum areas of Manchester there was so much poverty knocking about and when the revolution happened it sort of gave everyone an opportunity to work and these people that didn't have any money started getting money because they was working regularly so everyone wanted to be in Manchester and everybody wanted to work in Manchester because there was so much job opportunities so with job opportunities come money and a different way of life you know you could change the way you, the way of life that you, that you was living back then so everyone wanted to work in Manchester but it sort of killed off the Moravian settlement because the community then broke up over the space now it wasn't instant but possibly the space of around 40 years and it sort of diluted the, uh, the community to what it is today I mean this was such a tight-knit community, and in ways it still is, you know. But they just couldn't compete with Manchester. 
and the people that were making the bread and they were weaving. Sorry, just move over here before I get run over. The people that were um, making the bread and they were selling it and the people that were, you know, the weavers, they had to go and get proper jobs like out, outside here. And it, it was the downfall of the community in the end. But what you can see today is beautiful buildings are still here. The cobbles are the exact same cobbles that I'm walking on. I've even got my shorts on today, look. Got the old milk bottles out. It's gorgeous. Um, enough about my legs anyway. Let's get back on the subject. Now, it's still here and what you see today is a sort of watered down version of what it was. The, the houses are still the same. Everything's the same. But the... Um, the Moravians have sort of disappeared a bit and normal people live in these houses now. There's probably still some descendants that are here and the church is still going strong to be honest. And this is all that's left now. But you know, when you look back on it, if they ever, you take a, I always try and do these, when I, when I do these sort of videos and I do so much history, I try, try and take a little piece of what I've learned. And what I've learned about this bit is that, you know, we've got a lot to learn from them. I'm not a religious person, um, but the community that they had, being so tight knit, it's like the old school mentality that we used to have when I was growing up. Now, you could go to the shop, you probably hear your nana say it all the time, don't you? And I sound really old, but I'm not, I'm only 32. But you could go to the shop and leave your door open, do you know what I mean? Because your neighbours were your neighbours and you knew them. And you know, you just don't have that community anymore. So, if we're gonna take anything from the Moravians, you know, it's to be, the, the community was a lot stronger and better. And I try and take a piece with me each time I do a, a bit of an explore and do all this research, but, you know, if we're gonna take a, anything off them and learn anything from them, it's to sort of be nice to each other, isn't it? So that's it for today, I'm going to wrap it up here, I hope you've enjoyed it, it's a beautiful little spot, and I'll see you next time, cheers. I was happy there, I didn't, I didn't feel I would leave it again. again. again.